Hello, this is Mr. Wynn, and this video is about graphing sine and cosine functions. So let's first graph a basic sine graph, meaning f of x equals sine of x. Remember the x or inputs are just the angles in radian or degrees, while the y's or outputs are the sine values. We we'll use a unit circle to help us plot points. So starting at sine of 0 degrees or 0 radians, the y value is 0. So 0 gives us 0. Then I go next, sine of 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians gives us the y value of 1 half. So when the angle is pi over 6, the result is 1 half. So this is pi over 6 is right here, but it's 0.5. I'm going to set the root 2 over 2 and root 3 over 2. It is on here. I just want to find the points. This next nice number is 0, 1. So if I go sine of 90 degrees or pi over 2, that gives the y value of 1. So the angle is pi over 2. The y value is 1. So that's that point right there. I keep going. The next nice one is 1 half. So 5 pi over 6 or 150 degrees will give us half. So here's half. That's right here. That should be 150 degrees or 5 pi over 6. The next one is pi. So sine of pi or 180 degrees is 0. So pi 180 degrees is 0. And usually you stick to six to radians, but you keep that process going until you get all these points. And then once you do a full circle, it starts repeating again. All right, so going to keep going up, then down, then up, then down, up, then down. You can also do negative angles, so it goes this way and just keeps repeating. So the first thing we should notice is the graph appears to be repeating itself. That should make perfect sense since we're just going in circles. You know that co-terminal angles have the same values. So we call this periodic behavior because it just keeps repeating this period, the same up, down, up pattern. So it goes up, down, up, up, down, up. All right, the domain of a sine graph is all row numbers because you just put in an angle, you put any angle you want. Again, it's just going to be some circular rotation around the unit circle. Um, the range, though, is from negative 1 to positive 1, including both, so closed. So the highest y value is positive 1, the lowest y value is negative 1. So here's the maximum of 1, minimum of negative 1, maximum 1, minimum of negative 1. So there's multiple maximums and minimums. All right, the period of a sine graph, what starts repeating itself is 2 pi. So it starts here, and it goes all the way here, then it starts repeating. Now it starts doing the up motion, and then the downward motion, downward motion, up motion. So it goes up down, down, up. All right, this is a little marker right here. All right, and also sine is an odd function since the sine of x is equal to the negative sine of negative x. So that's a reflection across both the x-axis and the y-axis. If I flip sideways and flip downwards, it'll match. Or you can rotate 180 degrees. All right, so the same thing for cosine. Again, x is the angles, y is the cosine values. Got a typo right there. All right, again, the unit circle helps plot points. So I go to 0 degrees. Cosine 0, well, the x value of this is 1, so that's why it's 0, 1. Then I go a nice point. It goes pi over 3, or 6 degrees, is 1 half. So it's about right here. Then here, cosine of pi over 2, or 9 degrees, the x value is 0. So we go pi over 2, or 9 degrees, you get 0. You repeat this process all the way to you finish this whole revolution. So once you get all the way to 2 pi, you go back to 1. So it goes this way. It goes down, down, up, up. And that's a period because it's going to repeat. It's going to go down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. So it makes this little shape. So like before, it's repeating itself. Again, it makes sense because we're going rotations around the circle. Periodic behavior. Domains all our numbers. We use enter any angle in it, radians or degrees. Uh, range is also negative 1 to 1, closed because that's the highest you can go and the lowest you can go. Um, period is also 2 pi, because that's when it starts repeating itself after it goes a whole circle. And cosine is considered even, because the cosine of x is the same as cosine of negative x. All right. Now, if you didn't notice, a cosine and sine graph have a lot in common. In fact, they're actually the same graph, just horizontally shifted. So here's the red line. That is sine x. The blue line is cosine x. And cosine x starts at 0, 1, while sine x starts at 0, 0, the origin. If I move this green, or sorry, the blue line right pi over 2 and overlap, it will be perfectly the same. So actually, uh, sine of x is equal to cosine of x minus pi over 2. So here's the graph. Here's sine of x. Here's cosine of x. So if I want to shift it to the right side, I'm going to do minus pi over 2, and it's the same graph. All right, I could also shift it the other way. I could have, instead of going right pi over 2, I could have gone left. Uh, 3 pi over 2. So if I do plus 3 pi over 2, it's going to be the same graph. So let's try it. So let's make it plus.
plus sign, then 3 pi over 2, same graph. All right. So last slide I mentioned horizontal shifts. Well, all of the A, B, H, K transformations still apply, even the trig function graphs. So we'll have the format f of x or y equals a times sine of b parentheses x minus h, close parentheses, then plus k, or for cosine, same idea. But there's a, b, those are the multipliers, and there's h, k, those are the add and subtract. And in case you've forgotten, they do the exact same thing as before. So a reflects over the x-axis if it's negative, so upside down. Is a vertical stretch if it's bigger than one. Is a vertical compression if it's smaller than one. B reflects with the y-axis if it's negative. Horizontal stretch if B is smaller than one. Horizontal compression if B is bigger than one. Again, this opposite. So if you see B is two over three, you say, oh, that's a horizontal stretch by three over two. All right, H shifts left to right. Again, also is opposite. Then K is up and down. Also, remember the trick part. If you see B and H at the same time, you must factor out the B to see the true H. A lot of people forgot that and they get things wrong. Now, one also other thing I need to say is this. Before we start analyzing transformations, I'll mention that for trig, they actually renamed the letters A, B, H, K into A, B, C, D. But they do the exact same thing. So you can use either format you want, but don't be surprised when you see A times sine of B of X minus C plus, plus, plus D. You actually see the same format in physics when dealing with waves. Maybe you remember but A is amplitude, B is period of frequency, C and D are what we call phase shifts. Again, it's up, down, left, right. All right, let's try breaking down the transformations. Uh, we do need a little more vocabulary. So let's go back and compare the original parent, y equals sine of x, to y equals a times sine of b of x minus h plus k. If I match the format, Notice that a is 1, b is 1, h is 0, k is 0. The first thing you should do is actually look at k. So since k is 0, we're not moving the picture up or down. So our middle will remain the x-axis. The x-axis is also known as y equals 0. This is referred to as our midline. It's very important. You, it will always match k. Find this first because it will help you do the next part. That's why I drew the dotted green line. Next we go to a. a equals 1 in this case. Besides the picture upside down or not, is our vertical stretch or compressed factor. Since it affects our height, we refer to it as the amplitude, meaning how high above or below the graph goes from the midline. So this is connected to the midline. So midline was 0. If I add 1, because that's what A is here, it goes up to 1. That's your max. If I subtract 1, it goes down to negative 1. Last is B. B is 1. Besides flipping sideways or not, it's our horizontal stretch or compressed factor. So this affects our width, how wide it gets, or how skinny, uh, skinny it gets. It affects our period. It depends how fast we repeat our shape. All right, so either it increases it or decreases it. The period formula is going to follow this formula. P equals 2 pi, the period of what we're graphing. So for sine and, and cosine, the period is supposed to be 2 pi. That's a full circle. Over B. So here's a harder problem. We're going to graph this, y equals 4 times sine of 2x minus pi plus 2. Now, a lot of people think that h is pi, so it's going to write pi, but that's wrong. Remember, you first have to factor out b, so the true h. So if I take out 2 here, and this is in the parentheses, so inside like sine, if I divide both sides 2, it'll be 2 parentheses x minus pi over 2, close parentheses, close parentheses. So really, we're going to write pi over 2 and not write pi. All right, so first, k. K is positive 2. That means our midline is positive 2. Then we look at A. A is 4, so we go 4 above and below 2. Just add or subtract from K. So 2 plus 4 is 6. That's our max. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. That's our minimum. Then we look at B. B is 2, so technically we're doing a horizontal compression by 1 over half, 1 over 2. Again, it's opposite. You have to flip this fraction. But more importantly, let's use the formula to find the period. The period equals 2 pi over 2, which reduces the pi, and you'll see that in the picture in a second. Then last, you're going to use hk to find your starting point. Then you're going to find four more nice points by plugging specific x values. Um, to find that, divide p by 4 for a good scaling. So let me show you this first. So here's our original. Here's the original problem. Right now, I told you I factor out the 2. It's going to be the same picture. All right, so that's what we have right now. Notice. We are right 
pi over 2 up 2. So pi over 2, 2 is right. It's our starting point. So the origin moved here, and uh, it's not nice. So, But notice from 2, it goes up to the highest point, which in this case was 1 for the original. But this goes up to the highest point, in this case, 6. Also, this is 3 pi over 4. Notice if we do pi divided by 4, that's our scaling. Pi over 2 plus pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. All right, and you'll find all the nice points this way. You'll find the highest, lowest, and the middle point if you follow that formula. But anyways, oops, let me go back and just show the whole picture. All right, notice we have the midline of y equals 2. That's the middle of this blue picture. Um, from this y line of 2, it goes up 4. That's why it's blue right here, up 4 and down 4. So the domain, or sorry, range is from negative 2 to positive 6 closed. Our period, I said it's pi, so instead of going taking 2 pi, we're starting here, you go from here to here and starts, the graph is uh, like said, horizontally compressed, it's squished from the side, so it starts repeating the pattern, the period, faster. So from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, you subtract that, it's actually just 1 pi. All right, um, I also plotted the five nice points in purple. So we start at right pi over 2 up 2. Then we're going to add pi over 4 to our x to get 3 pi over 4, plug it in, I get 6. Add pi over 4 to that, so 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is just pi. So plug into the equation, you get 2. Then add pi to, over 4 to the pi, so that's 4 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4 is 5 pi over 4. You plug into the original problem, you get a negative 2. Then you add pi over 4 to that, so that makes it 6 pi over 4, which reduces to 3 pi over 2. Plug into the equation, you get 2. And that is a full period, and then it starts repeating thereafter. Right, so that's how you graph one of these. It actually takes a lot of work, so it takes eh, pretty close to a full page. All right, so cosine is in the exact same way. I'm not going to do it because it takes a while. But a, a good trick is to remember how the first five points of each parent function looks. And also, I'll do more of these in the live sessions to make sure you come to those. But if you think about it, cosine of 0 is 1. So we start high at 0, 1. Then it has to go down towards the middle, because we're in the range, the maximum is 1. So it goes pi over 2, 0. Then it has to go downwards again. This is a typo, one sec. All right, I fixed that typo. So it goes downwards again to low at pi negative 1, because the cosine of pi is negative 1, because that's negative 1, 0 on the unit circle. Then it goes back up, because uh, that's the lowest, negative 1. It goes back to up to 3 pi over 2, 0. Then goes up again to 2 pi comma 1. So cosine 2 pi is 1. So really, I remember high, mid, low, mid, high. And if A is negative, then you just flip them. So it's at high, it'd be low, middle, high, middle, low. So going back to the cosine graph, uh, which right here. So it starts high, goes to the middle, then it goes low, then it goes back to the middle, then it goes high. So it starts repeating that V shape. Sine is very similar. Sine of 0 is 0, so it starts at mid. Then it has to go up to high, because sine of pi over 2 is 1. Then it goes back down to mid, pi 0. Then it goes back down again to low, 3 pi over 2, negative 1. Then it goes back to mid, 2 pi, comma 0. So really, sine is mid, high, mid, low, mid. That's its one period. If A is negative, you just flip the highs and lows. So it would be mid, low, mid, high, mid. So let's just do normal, mid, high, mid, low, mid. If you go back here to sine graph, starts mid, goes up to high, goes back to mid, goes down low, goes back to mid. It always goes one direction to get to the really highest or lowest point. And that's a full period. All right, that's it for the video. Make sure you come to the live session because I will be graphing a lot of these, and they do take a lot of time to learn and graph. So that will help you get these right. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.